This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are heading down to Mexico City to wrap up week number 11 in the NFL. We have got the 49ers and the Cardinals on a neutral site down in Mexico. We're going to break down that game from a betting perspective, let you know where we're seeing value in the prop market and more over at FanDuel Sportsbook by talking to Ryan Williams. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Ryan Williams. Checking out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, week 11 was pretty boring most of the early slate, but then did pick up uh, with watching Dak Prescott unleash a flamethrower, watching Patrick Mahomes doing Patrick Mahomes stuff. So did end on a high note. How are you doing today? Oh, you know, doing doing all right. Um, yeah, I thought the the main slate was was fairly decent for me. Um, okay. Had a couple bad beats. Like, I mean, I had a lot of Denver offense going in the late slate. Yeah. Um, that you know, I, I should have known what to expect from that. Um, that that didn't make me feel great. But I was pretty. I mean, the the numbers on the Chicago Atlanta game were were just they, they were just too too hard to overlook. And yeah. I just took my shot with Fields and, and Mooney, um, played C Pat, which, you know, oh. didn't really work out, but the way that the slate presented itself, it worked out that he yeah. got that return touchdown. Yeah. Um, so so that was fun. But um but yeah, I mean we're we're really focused on the Thanksgiving slate that's coming mm-hmm. up. The one that, you know, the slates to beat all slates. That's that's the one that we look forward to every year. Uh, so I can't wait to discuss that one with you later this week. I was kicking myself after the Patterson touchdown because I was like, oh, man, I knew about the revenge game. I was like, OK, that's that's obviously <laughs> the motive, prime motivating factor. What else could matter more than the revenge game? But I was like, I didn't think to stack him with the Falcons defense and special teams like, ah, you get the double dip. The only time in the world you get a double dip where you get six points for a touchdown yep. twice in the same play. And I. I'm a fool, Ryan. I overlooked it. Uh, you know, the revenge game was accounted for. I uh, did not account for the J. Ron curse revenge game against the Vikings. You know, just uh, a lot oh of a lot gosh. of flubs, a lot of errors on my end uh, for the main slate. Too much Kenyon Drake, you know, just uh, just uh, making great decisions. Betting the Jets plus three and a half a day highlighted by great decisions across <laughs> the board. And I'm ready for Monday night for sure. We talked about that game. We we talked about that game. Oh I yeah, got, we did. I got, I, I got ugly. I got ugly backdoored on on a lot of things. I, I felt like, um, but you know, pa- Patriots was strong. Felt very strong about the Cowboys one and a half, which ended up incredible. Um, so we'll, you didn't we'll need see. the one and a half. The, the one and a half was you know it it, it you <laughs> laid the one and a half. You didn't yep. have to sweat that one. No backdoor there. No no backdoor there. No backdoor there. So it's fun, man. It's it's always fun when things can break your way. But overall, yeah, what an ugly what an ugly slate uh, week eleven was on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we actually went head to head on Falcons and Bears. Side Falcons minus three, you had Bears plus three. So it's fitting that was a push. Uh, that that <laughs> right. that was destined to be a push at all times. I saw Tyler Algier get kind of loose uh, on that last drive, and I was like, oh, is he going to score? Like, and then he slid down. I was like. That's what he should have done, but I was a little little upset about it. I was kind of hoping because I knew that the Jets game was bound to like ruin me. So I had to like try to get the win via the Falcons, but (laughs) it was not to be. Speaking of which, I've got a I've got a wager on tonight's game, too. We'll talk about whether I feel good about that now in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Still three podcasts for this week on Thanksgiving. We've got this one today. We've got our college football week number 13 episode coming up tomorrow with Ed Fang. We'll also talk some World Cup with Ed tomorrow on that show. And then on Wednesday, Ryan is back with us to break down uh, NFL Week 12 betting. We'll talk some Thanksgiving. We'll talk about the other slate, other games as well. So get all those by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And make sure you're subscribed to the FanDuel YouTube page because those do go up there as well. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports boat, because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's three bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Try out features. 
players like same game parlays play your way and bet on more than just the final score wager on everything from touchdowns to total yards and catches all in an app that's safe secure and super easy to use so sign up today for a no sweat first bet make every moment more this season with FanDuel Official sportsbook partner of the NFL must be 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager only. A refund issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. And also in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. Let's take a look here at this Monday night game between the 49ers and the Cardinals. Again, this is a neutral site game. The 49ers, eight and a half point favorites. Total is 43 and a half. And Ryan, before we talk about those markets, top down view of this game for you. Yeah, so top down view for me. um, Let's see, we're we're at the eight and a half. So with no Kyler, um, we're going to see Colt McCoy yet again. Um, and, and this offense kind of, you know, rallied around him, you know, being a backup quarterback. This is a guy who's been a journeyman um, of a backup quarterback so far. Um, eight and a half feels like a lot. We just saw the 49ers lay, you know, a bunch of points that the other week weren't able to cover. Um, Cliff Kingsbury, since being with the Cardinals, has had their number. Um, the Cardinals are 6-1-1 one, and one against the spread under Cliff Kingsbury. So with this being at a neutral side, I, I feel like I have no choice but to take the Cardinals here with their points. I feel like this is a game where they'll try and get the run game involved just a little bit more. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, the way Rondo Moore has been playing will help. Um, the 49ers, you know, I think that they... They can still win this game outright. Um, I'm definitely not going to take the Cardinals even at even at three to one. I think is what I saw it last time, which you know always is enticing on a neutral site. But you know, it, it just depends on what Jimmy G we're going to get. He's had some yeah. success in this matchup against this defense before. This is an incredible matchup for George Kittle um, as the Arizona Cardinals defense just bleeds points to tight ends. Um, but they have they have trouble, you know, if the game is able to stay close to be able to put teams out of reach. So I, I just feel like, you know, the way that this game shapes up, the Cardinals should um, be able to cover this large of a spread. Yeah, so the bet I was wondering if I'd regret is is Cardinals. It was plus eight at the time, so I'm not going to get CLV here because Kyler ruled out. Also, they lost a pretty important cornerback, so I'm not going to get CLV here. It's going to close at eight and a half, I would assume, and I'm not going to. I'm going to get a bad number on that, but I still don't feel bad about it because I actually, when I made that bet, I assumed the Cardinals would be starting McCoy based on initial reports on Kyler's injury, based on what the early word was uh, with regards to it being a week to week kind of thing. So I assume that Kyler was in there and I have a process I go through when trying to account for injuries, um, plugging in a backup player and seeing the impact that that makes. And when I put in Colt McCoy over Kyler Murray, my numbers were still saying, I'm trying to get the exact number here, uh, they were saying that this is a, a 5.7 point game in the 49ers' favor. That's still significant. That means that they're definitely the better team, but that also means I got 2.8 points of wiggle room here uh, to be wrong and still potentially cover this number. You're getting eight, which is not a key number, but it's you know adjacent to a key number. You get some wiggle room with like a Mr. Extra Point or something like that. You get seven, six, uh, all those. So... I still feel okay about it, especially given this total is not super high. It's tougher to cover eight and a half point spread when the total is 43 and a half than when it's like 50 and a half, whatever it may be. So, and the other thing that you mentioned that I, that played in my mind and increased my confidence in taking this was, can the 49ers really pull away? You know, we, we talk about, um, a good rushing offense being a key to putting a team away. And the 49ers have that. They have arguably the best rushing offense in football, but can they hang a big score and really bury a team? I'm not sure. So I'd feel good about the eight and a half. I don't, or I I feel good about if you hadn't, you know, bet the Cardinals yet. I think I would take eight and a half personally. Um, But like, and I still feel okay about eight, despite it moving against me. I just, it's, it does make you a little bit uncomfortable betting on a backup quarterback against 
Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, et cetera, et cetera. But I still think that that probably is the right side. Yes, and 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 I agree. And this this is going to be an interesting game, and we can talk about this later um, as we get into the specific players. But playing in Mexico City, like this is this is like playing in Denver. I mean, yeah. from, from what I can see, the yeah. elevation is out, outrageous. Um, seven seven thousand and three hundred and forty nine feet. Oh, it's above Denver. <laughs> yeah. So um, so this will have an effect, you mm-hmm. know, on these teams. You know whether. How, you, however we want to view that or not, like it's still going to have an effect on the way that these guys play. So I think there are some interesting angles that we can talk about um, when we get into the specific players. And now I feel worse about eight because it just moved to nine and a half. So it seems <laughs> like the news of Kyler Murray being out actually did affect the line eventually. So it's now wow. nine and a half. Um Oops, I guess that's <laughs> we'll just kind of live with that. But uh, we did see the market just move to nine and a half right now. We'll see how this yep. goes. Wow. Part of that was because report this morning that Kyler Murray will not play for this week. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins does seem like he will play. So let's talk about the Cardinals side here and the prop markets on them. Yep. They're pretty sparse just because there are still those question marks around the injuries. But what are you seeing out there as far as uh, props on the Cardinal side of things that are enticing to you? Yeah, so like you said, pretty pretty sparse. I mean, even if you're looking at other uh, other um, areas um, outside of the FanDuel sports book, you're, you're still having trouble finding that because of the uncertainty. I believe around the um, quarterback position and not wanting to get a weird number. But R- Rondell Moore is going to be a guy that I look to target. Um, you know, we don't really get like a rushing receiving with him, like a Debo yeah. Samuel or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, he, ha- he has the propensity to, to take some carries. Um, he has 23 targets over the past two games. One of those games being with Kyler one being with Colt McCoy, but in the Colt McCoy game, 13 targets, you know, more, more so than uh, Deandre Hopkins, I believe is what I saw. And so you love that he's getting involved, whatever they open at um, with him on a yardage prop, I feel like is, is going to feel low. Um, just the, I mean, Colt McCoy threw it 37, times um in the first matchup against a, a 49ers or 49ers a ram secondary that we tend to not want to target against um so i think that's interesting i i will be interested uh i think this is already listed and it's in the 70s um i'll pull it up again i had it up but james connor's rushing yeah. and receiving 72 and a um, half 72 and a half so i i feel like I, i'm interested in that just because of how many touches they were willing to give him with colt mccoy um and you know if this if we can have a neutral game script if they are staying well within that eight and a half um i feel like he will heavily be involved there's no Eno benjamin there um which does make me interested in somebody else for an anytime touchdown but as far as the rushing and receiving prop goes uh, i'm willing to get on that number um with with James Conner. And then I, I just would like to see reception totals. Um, if we can somehow get a Trey McBride reception total with no Zach Ertz being out there, this is the backup quarterback. Do they try and get this rookie going that they spent a high draft pick on as far as draft capital goes? Um, let, let's let's get some Trey McBride sprinkled in there. Um, there are still some pieces here on the Cardinal side that make you interested in, and can see why, you know, Colt McCoy was in good hands um, even in that yeah. last game because these are still weapons um, that, you know, he he's able to use at a high level. Were you hinting at a Keontae Ingram anytime touchdown? I was. Oh, hell yeah. 11 to 1. Uh, I was looking <laughs> at the exact same thing. <laughs> I love Keontae it. Ingram love is – so Corey Clement will be active this week. Uh, he'll but okay. he'll be up for special teams effectively. I think Ingram is going to be effectively the only guy behind James Conner. And – I mean, like, I'm guessing something happened with Eno Benjamin that made them comfortable releasing him. But, like, clearly they got to have some level of faith in Keontae Ingram if they were, like, okay, just releasing Eno Benjamin. So, 11 to 1 isn't bad. (laughs) You would think. Um, Yeah, I mean, I just just was like, wow, where, where, where would Keontae Ingram possibly be? You know, and and usually they pr- they price up those backup running yeah. backs, right? Yeah. Um, when you see, I mean, all the time. I mean, anything over eight and a half to one is always something that I'm going to be interested in. But yeah, I kept scrolling, and I was like, oh wow, Keontae Ingram, eleven to one. You know, and you're looking at it, he only got one carry last week, not really involved in the passing game. But there is no, you know, Benjamin now 
yeah. this guy was a healthy scratch coach's decision for the Houston team that he just signed with. So, yeah. I mean, for whatever that's worth, you know, they do have whatever faith in Keontae. Plus, when we're looking at the elevation, we could see maybe, you right. know, James Conner gets spelled a little bit more than he needs to, especially with the conditions that he's had health wise in the past. So, I'm just going to be willing to take a shot there at 11 to one. I know that's probably the only prop that we're going to get in the market for Keontae Ingram, but yeah, he's an interesting piece all around. I could not agree more. I did look at Colt McCoy anytime touchdown at 13 to one. That's now 14 to one. So I think that's an indication that I should just save my money. Don't do it. Um, I'll, I think the Ingram <laughs> one is a better, a better recommendation. Okay. Let's talk about the more fun side here. That is the 49ers. They're fully healthy. We saw them with Eli Mitchell being back last week. Debo Samuel is back as well. Anything popping for you on their side now that we've kind of got at least a a game of seeing how they want to play things here? Yeah, I mean, it's tough because I I try not to say, you know, the too too many mouths to feed. I feel like we use that a lot um, in the industry. But when we're looking at prop markets here and where the leans are, like that's how I feel about this 49ers team. Like they are just so stacked across the board that any one of these guys can pop off at any time especially with Christian McCaffrey being there and the usage that this guy takes up it just doesn't make you feel you know Debo Samuel at a at a receiving number of 50 and a half is something that I would have jumped on you know against this Cardinals team in, in any type of propensity and then you're looking at the way that this this 49ers team has played and you know you, you just don't know about it I mean even Brandon Ayuk who's kind of found you know a second wind here um in this season 56 and a half um feels a little bit hefty but I, I won't blame anybody for getting in on those numbers um the one that stands out to me is George Kittle you know at 44 and a half yards I mean freaking Tommy Trimble um for the Panthers <laughs> almost got to this number and we're talking about George Kittle like this is just this is just way too low of a number for what they've been allowing to the tight end position all year long um, so getting in on Kittle props where you can receptions yardage, like I said, 44 and a half is great. I mean, even the anytime touchdown for George Kittle, you're looking at plus 180, um, which which is very enticing um, the way that Jimmy Garoppolo has been targeting him the past couple of games. So so that's kind of where I am with it. Um, they don't have any listed and I, I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. But Eli Mitchell. Uh, so we're talking about mm-hmm. backup running backs like he would be a guy I definitely would want to get on. Um, from any type of prop standpoint, I feel like we'll open too low. Um, he, he's been utilized right off of the IR, fresh off yeah. the IR, even with Christian McCaffrey being there. And it just speaks to the, the, it just speaks to how they like to play football. Like even with Christian McCaffrey there, they're still willing to give Eli Mitchell, you know, double digit touches um, to give him a rest and to spell him. Um, and Chris McCaffrey so efficient with his touches, it doesn't really matter. But the fact that they were using him like in the red zone, like fresh off of the IR, um, just showed me that they want to give Eli Mitchell some love. And he's coming in. It's it's you know even the even the sports book have caught up to it because he's the third uh, favorite to score a touchdown right. at plus one thirty. Uh, which you know you could talk yourself into that. It kind of feels like you know you're kind of leaving some on the table. But plus one thirty is nice. Also before with James Conner plus a hundred for him to score. Absolutely love that. And he. And he Anytime there's plus money um, on a favorable guy, you know, I'm going to take it, Jim. Yeah, with the um, Eli Mitchell one, I thought the most encouraging thing for him last week was that they were using him even when that game was like tight. That game was, I mean, it was tight the entire way. And Eli Mitchell still got a lot of run, which to me says that's like a thing they intend to do is using him with McCaffrey, especially like you mentioned the elevation. Maybe they give McCaffrey a couple more extra blows. uh, That could be good for Mitchell. The one that, was at least somewhat intriguing to me was the Debo Samuel one because of the injuries in the secondary for Arizona 50 and a half. And with Mitchell and McCaffrey both being there, that does kind of free Debo up to be just a receiver again. That's probably not his most like valuable role, just being a pure, pure wide receiver. He did not get anywhere close to this number last week, 24 receiving yards. But if he is going to be, you know, a, a full receiver against the beat up secondary, I think that's at least interesting. I've not taken that and I probably will not, but I think that if I'm looking at a, a 49ers prop, that's the one that is most interesting to me. Absolutely. So we talked about uh, James Connor, talked Kittle, talked Keontae Ingram, the biggest of them all. Uh, any touchdown props? What's your favorite one for tonight? And any other ones you want to shout out? 
Yeah, I think the James Conner one at plus 100 is is my favorite just because we're getting plus money on the lead back there, um, the way they were giving him the ball. Absolutely love that. Um, we'll be taking a shot. Um, we'll be taking a shot on George Kittle at plus 180. Um, I definitely will be taking a shot on Keontae Ingram, as we talked about him being 11 to 1. Um, the other one who's kind of interesting to me, um, it, it, it feels gross. And I haven't really looked at the numbers outside of this guy. Just does He just doesn't leave the field in three wide receiver sets for the 49ers. Is Jawan Jennings at plus 750. Like mm-hmm. the way you're talking about how this, you know, secondary is beat up. And we always expect, you know, the guys like Debo and Ayuk to pop off. But Jawan Jennings has still, you know, been involved in this offense for somewhat over the past couple of weeks. Um, a guy that I was kind of like dr- drafting in best ball um, because of the way that uh, Trey Lance had targeted him towards the end of last season and him being on the field, like just want to take a shot there. But yeah, plus 750, like that would be another like Riverboat Ron-ish bet that I would kind of make there. Not necessarily favorite, but just one of those things that I would, you know, I could see happening in this game. He kind of feels like he's taken over a bit of the Kendrick Bourne role that Kendrick Bourne had out there where he yeah. was only on the field in like impactful situations. You know, he's getting um, third down targets. He has he's only had one target inside the red zone so far this year, but he has a Kendrick Bourne esque feel to him. Uh, so Juwan Jennings plus 750 for that one there. I think for me, if I I while we were talking, I did take the Keontae Ingram Ingram one uh, because I was like, uh it actually is pretty fun to get him at 11 to one. So I did take that while we were talking. I think that's the one I'll be riding with uh, for yeah. tonight, you know, riding on a guy who was in an inactive for the first couple of games of the Cardinals uh, didn't play a ton of snaps last week either. What could go wrong? Betting Keontae Ingram plus 1100. Can go you know, wrong. I'm, I'm feeling more skittish about this game now, having seen the market move to nine and a half while we were talking. So, <laughs> Heading into this one, Ryan, I don't feel the best about my read on it, but I feel like my hope is that I got the Jets game so wrong yesterday. I know they almost covered and they should have covered. I know that they should have covered, but like I feel like in getting that game so wrong, maybe the universe will take pity on me tonight and allow me to get either the Ingram bet or... How did did you get that game wrong, Jim? Like, how what what can you get wrong? You can't... Like, they held them the three points of the entire game and it was a punt return touchdown I, to seal the game. That I was bet the on a team. Of the I season. bet on Zach Wilson against the Bill Belichick. Oh, that, okay. That's I tweeted fair. about that on Monday. I was like, oh, my numbers want me to bet a skittish deer like quarterback against Bill Belichick. No, we're not doing this. And I did. Like, well, at least, you know, he I didn't listen like, to myself. At least he feels like scoring three points doesn't let the defense down. So, yeah, you know. We have you We'll see how that goes. He's facing the Bears this week. So, uh, you know, true. hopefully Fields is healthy. Hopefully Fields is okay. Um, yes. But, like, that could be a either messy or fun game. I, it will not be anywhere in between. It's either nope. messy or fun, nothing else. Maybe we'll make that a feature game on Wednesday show. You know, what, what yeah, bigger but... game could there possibly be on Thanksgiving week than Jets-Bears on Sunday? <laughs> no bigger one. No bigger one. So I need to bail out tonight. If the universe is feeling merciful, get me a Keontae Ingram touchdown or get me uh, Cardinals to somehow cover a line where I've gotten one and a half points to move against me. We'll see how it plays out, though. That is Ryan Williams. Ryan, I want to thank you once again for swinging by for today. Good luck with your bets and your showdown slates or your single game slates for tonight. And we'll talk to you once again Wednesday for our full show talking Jets Bears for all 30 minutes. Love it. I can't wait. Um, I'll make sure that I wear my field jersey (laughs) and uh, let's ride and get after it, Jim. No, pleasure talking with you. And uh, we'll catch you next time, as always. I'll just rock the Chad Pennington figurine the whole time and we'll uh, we'll try to channel that. If we can bring back Chad for that game, maybe I can uh, justify betting Jets minus four in that one. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Good luck to all of you tonight. We're back once again tomorrow to break down some college football and World Cup. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 